What an extraordinary place. All those stone animals. And people too. It's... It's like a museum. Hush. Aslan's doing something. What's he doing? He's... He's breathing on the statues. See? He started with that stone lion. But why? Oh, Susan, look! Now, I expect you've seen someone put a lighted match to a bit of newspaper to light a fire, and for a second, nothing seems to have happened. And then you notice a tiny streak of flame creeping along the edge of the newspaper. It was like that now. For a second, after Aslan had breathed upon him, the stone lion looked just the same. Then, a tiny streak of gold began to run along his white marble back. Then it spread, then the colour seemed to lick all over him as the flame licks all over a bit of paper. Then, while his hindquarters were still obviously stone, the lion shook his mane, and all the heavy stone folds rippled into living hair. Then he opened a great red mouth, warm and living, and gave a prodigious yawn. And now his hind legs came to life. He lifted one of them and scratched himself. And then, having caught sight of Aslan, he went bounding after him. Of course, the children's eyes turned to follow the lion, but the sight they saw was so wonderful that they soon forgot about him. Everywhere, the statues were coming to life. Creatures were running after Aslan and dancing round him till he was almost hidden in the crowd. Oh, I wonder... I mean, is it safe? Safe? The giant Aslan has just breathed on. Bless me. I must have been asleep. Now, where's that ratty little witch that was running around on the ground? Now for the inside of the house. Look alive, everyone! Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chamber! Leave no corner unsearched. You never know where some poor prisoner may be concealed! And into the interior they all rushed, and for several minutes the whole of that dark, horrible, fusty old castle echoed with the opening of windows and with everyone voices crying out with what they found but the best of all was when Lucy came rushing upstairs Aslan Aslan I found Mr Tumnus oh do come quick oh Lucy Mr Tumnus oh, did Mr Beaver give you back your handkerchief as a matter of fact he did oh I'm so glad to see you again <laughs> A moment later, Lucy and the little fawn were holding each other by both hands and dancing round and round for joy. At last, the ransacking of the witch's fortress was ended. The whole castle stood empty with every door and window open and the light and the sweet spring air flooding into all the dark and evil places which needed them so badly. The whole crowd of liberated statues surged back into the courtyard, and the giant, who was named Giant Rumblebuffin, knocked down the gates so they could leave. At this point, Aslan clapped his paws together and called for silence. Silence! Our day's work is not yet over. And if the witch is to be finally defeated before bedtime, we must find the battle at once. And join in, I hope, sir. Of course, Centaur. And now, those who can't keep up, that is, children, dwarves, and small animals, must ride on the backs of those who can. That is, lions, centaurs, unicorns, horses, giants, and eagles. Those who are good with their noses must come in front with us lions to smell out where the battle is. Look lively 
and sort yourselves. <laughs> when all were ready, they set out through the gap in the castle wall. At first, the lions and dogs went nosing about in all directions. But then suddenly, one great hound picked up the scent and gave bay. There was no time lost after that. Soon all the dogs and lions and wolves and other hunting animals were going at full speed with their noses to the ground and all the others were following as fast as they could. Faster and faster they went as the scent became easier to follow. And then just as they came to the last curb in a narrow winding valley, Lucy heard, above all these noises, another noise, a different one, which gave her a sick feeling inside. It was a noise of shouts and shrieks and of the clashing of metal against metal. Then they came out of the narrow valley and at once she saw the reason. There stood Peter and Edmund and all the rest of Aslan's army fighting desperately against the crowd of horrible creatures whom she had seen last night. Only now in the daylight they looked even stranger and more evil and more deranged. There also seemed to be far more of them. She's all over the battlefield. Do you see Peter and Edmund? There's Edmund, fighting that dwarf. He's bleeding. He's been wounded. What about Peter? There! He's fighting the witch. Off my back, children. The witch is mine. It can't be! It was Edmund's doing, Aslan. We'd have been beaten if it hadn't been for him. The witch was turning our troops into stone right and left, but nothing would stop him. He fought his way through three ogres to where she was turning one of your leopards into a statue. Mm. And when he reached her, he had the sense to bring his sword smashing down on her wand, instead of trying to go for her directly. That was the mistake the rest of us were making. Going for her directly and simply getting made into a statue for our pains. But once her wand was broken, we began to have some chance. He was terribly wounded. He's in here. Oh, I'm sorry, but he's to have no visitors now. Oh, it's you. How is he? Very bad. I'm afraid there isn't much hope, sire. Quick, Lucy. The cordial. The cordial? Mm. Oh, my present from Father Christmas. Here it is. Place a few drops in your brother's mouth. Yes, sir. Is that enough? There are other people wounded. Yes, I know. But have I given him enough? Daughter of Eve, others also are at the point of death. Must more people die for Edmund? I'm sorry, Aslan. Come with me. For the next hour, they were busy. Lucy attending to the wounded, while Aslan restored those who'd been turned into stone. When at last she was free to come back to Edmund, she found him standing on his feet and not only healed of his wounds, but looking better than she'd seen him look for ages. He had become his real old self again and could look you in the face. And there, on the field of battle, Aslan made him a knight.